Hey guys, what is going on? Welcome back to another video here this week. Now in this video, I'm pretty well giving you my secret as to how I come up with continuous wattage and continuous current for a brushless motor when those two values are not known from the motor manufacturer right on their specification sheet. Now ultimately where I use this is essentially whenever the motor manufacturer doesn't give me those values or I don't know if I'm dealing with continuous power, continuous current, or peak power, peak current. I want to be able to distinguish the difference between those values because all my power systems are pretty well selected based off of continuous power. That's what I'm always looking for when it comes to most radio control setups where you're operating in that continuous fashion. Let's go ahead and take a look at exactly how we determine this. So in this video, what I've done is I've specifically laid out all the formulas and we'll get into that very shortly. Let's first take a look at the information that we have in the, on the board here. The first few values that we have here is the KV value, the weight in grams, and also our maximum RPM value. Those three specifications are necessary in order to make the calculations to determine voltage, wattage, and current when you're talking about continuous wattage and current. Now in some cases, motor manufacturers don't offer you this maximum RPM value. And if that is the case for you, we'll talk about this very shortly within the video as to what you can do to get around this. Ultimately, what we need is a weight and KV. These are absolute musts. If a motor manufacturer is not willing to tell you one of these values, you should not buy from that specific manufacturer. What I wanted to do here is give you examples that range significantly in terms of the motor size. So you, here you can see we're not dealing with little itty bitty motors. This motor is gigantic. It's massive. It produces a lot of power. It's super heavy. This is a 125 KV motor that weighs nearly three kilograms. Imagine that. That's a big beefy motor. I personally have never actually used a motor anywhere near this size. This here can deliver maximum of 10,000 RPM. When we go through the math, we end up seeing a max voltage of around 80 volts, continuous current of nearly 10 kilowatts or 10,000 watts, and our continuous current of 120 amps. So let's go ahead now and talk about exactly how we arrived at these motors. One big reason I have this information here is so that you can check, make sure that I came up with the correct values, and also you can run through it yourself to see exactly how these calculations are done. Then you can apply it to any one of your motors that you wanna go and do this too. So maximum voltage is our first value that we're going to be calculating here. In order to determine that maximum voltage, here what we need to do is we gotta take our maximum RPM and then divide this by our KV value. So simply here, we take our 10,000 RPM, we divide it by 125, and that leaves us with 80 volts. That's exactly how we get our max voltage. Then the next one here, we're gonna go and calculate our continuous wattage. This essentially works by using a multiplication factor. You take your weight in grams, this is the weight of the motor, and you multiply this by a value of 3.5 to 4.0. And this is going to give you that continuous wattage. So you take your 2745, you multiply that by your 3.5 to arrive at the 9608 value there. And then lastly, our continuous current just comes from the two calculations that we have just made. You take your continuous wattage and then you divide that by your maximum voltage that you calculated in. And this is what you're going to get, your continuous current that you can deliver utilizing that motor with all the specifications there. Now let's go and talk about some of the notes that I have here at the very bottom of our board. The first one that we have is in-runner versus out-runner motors. You can use this formula to produce results for you if you own either one of these motors. That will be totally fine. However, there will be some differences that we're gonna jump to right now and talk about. Our multiplication factor here that we used is between 3.5 and 4. There are a few different reasons why you would have this range and when you would use one value versus the other. A good example of that, if you have a high quality motor, you'll want to use the higher value here to give yourself a better result. If you're using a poorer quality or weaker quality motor, that's where you would use the 3.5. Now when it comes to outrunners, you can use an outrunner at this 4.0 if it's like one of the top quality outrunners available on the market. However, when it does come to outrunners, I would typically use somewhere around a 3.5 and in some cases, I would even drop that down to a 3.0 just to get that extra conservative factor. Ultimately, it's 
it's up to you as to what you are comfortable with, these numbers can work. Now another thing that affects the range is the type of environment that you're going to be installing your radio control power system in. If it's going to be a hot day, this is going to be perfectly fine for your typical hot day anywhere in the world with relatively minimal cooling. If you have that type of scenario where it's you're going to be operating in hotter temperatures and you don't really have good cooling going to the motor, you are going to want to use that factor on the lower end of the range. Now most things I do, I do it fairly conservatively because I like to overpower my systems, I like to make them reliable, and I always like to have room in case I want to bump it up later in the future. So this is why I have a 3.5 and all of these use that factor of 3.5 and that's the reason why this here is boxed in that green outlying box. So another thing that I want to go and point out here is that if you do not have the maximum RPM, if it's not known from the specification sheet, there is something that you can do. Essentially what you want to do is use the maximum voltage that is specified for the motor. They're going to have to give you some form of information to let you know what you can and cannot do with that motor. If, for example, it's specified that you can only use a maximum of a 3S battery pack on that specific motor, what you can do is multiply that by the maximum voltage of a specific motor to arrive at the absolute maximum voltage that you can use with that motor. For a 3S pack multiplying by 4.2 volts per cell you're going to get 12.6 volts. If it was a 4S pack you multiply that by 4.2 and you're going to get about 16.8 volts. So that's what you would end up dropping into the max voltage area here within the chart. And then if you work backwards, you can find your max RPM. So you're just switching the formula and going the other way with it. Now the last point that I have here up on the board is the maximum voltage is absolute. There's no other way to represent the voltage. It's a hard stop. This is the maximum for the motor. And I would highly suggest never going above maximum voltages. It's not because of an electrical concern. It is purely because of a mechanical physical concern. Concern. You do not want to overspin that motor and risk the possibility of throwing magnets apart within the motor. Well guys, that pretty well sums it up for this video. You can essentially go and calculate the continuous current, continuous wattage of any specific motor as long as you know a few different values. Now I did look up a specific motor manufacturer and take their data and then compare it to what they specified versus what I was able to calculate for continuous wattage. When I ended up doing that my results came out to be about 50 to 100 percent lower in terms of the continuous wattage as well as continuous current for that specific motor brand. When I dug into the fine print I then learned that that motor manufacturer actually specified very specific conditions, environmental conditions. They expect those parameters to only be valid if you have 20 to 30 kilometers an hour of airflow over top of the case of that motor in in order to achieve the results that they were posting on their spec sheet. It's something to definitely keep in mind that a motor manufacturer can specify continuous current and continuous wattage values and you don't know the exact conditions that those values have been specified in. A good motor manufacturer will end up placing that environmental conditions there up on their chart so that you're able to get an understanding as to what kind of environment they are actually suggesting their motors have been tested within. Hope you were able to learn something from this video today so that we can build better RCs tomorrow. As always, like the video if you do. Don't forget to hit that sub button so that I can see you in that next video. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.